Welcome to our first watercolor demo for my Mounts Botanical Gardens watercolor class. Normally we'd be doing this in the classroom, but this week because there's a new exhibit that is taking up the entire garden and needs to have the, the grounds closed for safety reasons while they're installing all the pieces, we can't have class on site. So I decided to put together a video of the demo that I would have done if we were together. I'm gonna to break it into two pieces. It will be of this cone flower that I photographed at the Skylands Botanical Garden in New Jersey some years ago. I know you can see this ring from the light on the photograph, but once I move that off to the side, you won't see that anymore and we'll be able to see the, the painting. So uh, we're gonna work on the cone flower. We'll do this in two separate videos. Try and keep these pretty short. I'm going to attack the background today. As you know, I like to work bigger shapes to smaller and less detail to more detail. So today we're gonna dive in and take care of the background. We're gonna do that mostly with my Robert Simmons number 26 Goliath brush. This is the one you see me use on a lot of backgrounds. As we get into smaller details, I have some Kalinsky Sables that I'll be using. For paints, we're using my core uh, watercolor travel pan set that you see me bring to class every week. Uh, as we go further into videos, you might see me bring out a different palette that has the American Journey colors from Cheap Joe's. That will just depend on how big the painting is and how I'm setting up the classroom. So for colors, since this is a warm green with a lot of yellow in it, we'll start with sap green. So we're gonna mix up enough color to cover the whole background. We'll have sap green. We'll definitely have some yellow mixed here separately. I'll have a little purple and a little red, and then one of the darker earth tones as well in big puddles here in the mixing palette so that I can grab them on the paper as I go. The goal will be to get ready and then get in and do the background as quickly as possible. The photo shows out of focus flowers um, that I will treat even more out of focus. They're just going to be pink blobs within the, the background by the time we're done. So I'm going to move the photo off, off site so you, you won't be able to see it. You'll have it on your phones from the email I sent you. And we'll work directly on the painting. Ready? Okay, I have already taken the time to draw out the flower, which I would recommend for you to do as well ahead of time. I've put in some quick reference guides for where the background gets darker and where the flowers are. I drew them in in, in pencil, although I will probably be much looser than that. So the first thing I'm going to do is with a pretty small brush. Actually, it's, it's not too small, it's very pointy. It's a number 12 Kalinske Sable. I wanna get in and paint around my flowers. And I certainly want this to stay wet, but I wanna get a nice hard edge for those pink flowers. You've seen me do something before where if the flower was a yellow flower and we were doing a green background or something like that, where I would pre-paint the background and the flower at the same time, all with one color, with a warm color to take care of the whole thing. And I'm not doing that here because if I added the pink, if I added a yellow, which certainly would work with the green, into that pink flower, it would never look right. I could never get, because watercolor is um, you can't go light over dark, I'd have an, it would be impossible for me to cover that yellow. So we're just going to be a little careful and outline the flower and this is a nice pointy brush this is a Kalinsky sable by rosemary brushes 
They're a fantastic brand that I've heard nothing but good things about from all of my fellow painters and they're required for a workshop that I'm taking in a couple of months. So I, I got them ahead of time just, just to get used to them. I certainly do like the point and I'm told that the point stays pretty good on these. And uh, specifically these are the um, Rosemary Snowdrop brushes. And uh, so far it's really, really nice handling. Um, even in a fairly big brush like a number 12 with this point on it, I'm getting into small shapes and just going around that pencil drawing. And once I get around the drawing, then, then I can get in there with that, that big Goliath brush, the one that I like so much, and really really knock that out the background the getting the background wet quickly now since we are wetting the whole background one thing that's going to happen i'm switching to the other brush now we will have to paint a little bit darker because we already have the water down on the paper so it will thin out the paint so we have to think about that when we're mixing our paint and to be honest with you, I went out of order. I really should have mixed up that paint before I wet the flower, or the background rather. So I'm probably going to have to do this again after I mix up my paint colors. But that'll be just a matter of putting a little bit more water back down. I have my, my board tilted, or my my paper tilted at about a 30 degree angle, so gravity is gonna help me. You see, I'll have to collect the pooled water at the bottom. And before I go any further, I am going to mix up my colors. Other items I have out, um, I mentioned the white gouache that we might need for the details. So I've got some of that out. I have the spray brush to help keep that paper wet. And I'm mixing up this, this green dark because there's already water on the paper and nice and juicy. Um, we've talked about consistency of paint. This would be somewhere in that range of whole milk. Um, bordering on half and half, so pretty thick. Uh, whole milk, I think, is where we would, we would drop this. And I'm adding up a little bit of cadmium primrose yellow. So, so far we've got sap green and primrose yellow. And again, I want to make sure I don't have to mix this up while the paper is drying on the board. So this is why I'm trying to get this out of the way now. I'm going to mix up a little bit of purple that can help neutralize the green. We need some alizarin crimson because that'll be the, the blobs for the, the pink flowers. Just to be safe, let's make a little bit of orange. That always works well with the green. That green, orange, purple always plays really nice together. And let's grab some earthy colors, the browns. Just so we have them. All right, we have our colors. I'm going to re-wet. Is, oops, I just dipped my brush in my coffee. That's what happens when I'm not paying attention. Now there's still a little bit of paint on this brush. Um, that's okay. The truth is that what you see there is so light that when it dries you wouldn't see it anyway. Always try to have a piece of paper towel, if not in your left hand if you're a righty, then at least nearby. 
you always might need to pick up some color real quick and you might need to just jump in there with some paper towel to fix something it's easier than pulling one off the roll while your paint is soaking into the paper and we're we're almost there I'm just making sure that we have by the way the stem of the flower I definitely did wet because that's darker than the green so I don't have to worry about that so much as opposed to the pink of the flower all right your paper at this point should be juicy wet you should see a nice shine on your paper um, this will be incredibly helpful for moving the paint around for the background because you want it to flow. Um, we're going to jump right in there with that green. And in looking at the photo that I have off, off camera, starting in the upper corner there, we're putting in some green and then a nice big blob of the yellow. And I'm going to actually... While I have a minute, I'm going to darken that green up even a little bit more, drop some more in. And we certainly want some green around the flower. Now, look at what it's doing. It's the paint is filling in because I have the board tilted. I'm going to move to my Kalinsky brush so I've got my point. And I can go right in and around those flowers. The trick is to do this fairly quickly. You want the, you don't want the paper to, to dry on you while you're getting that color down. That's, that's what you don't want. So get in there and push that paint around. And I've got this nice pointy brush, so I'm gonna get really brave and Paint around those flowers. And that point is really, really nice. Boy, does that make a difference. All right, but I've gotta I've gotta talk a little bit less and move a little bit more. We need darker down here, and it is possible that I will come in and do this background a second time. It's all going to depend on how I feel it'll play with the pink. I think the green needs to be darker than the pink in order for this to work really well. So let's get some more yellow up in here. Okay. Now we've got that area where the flowers are. going to drop that into the corner and then we're going to grab some more green and just start to drop it in around it we don't want it to be distinct we just want to have a hint of that color and now while I've still got the pointy brush I am working around oh, see I did that right there just grab your paper towel no big deal and gravity will work that right around forgot that this in here was green too but that worked out just fine now. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a second puddle of that green so I can add some purple to it to make a darker green down in the corners there we go that's what I'm looking for Because certainly around those pink flowers, I want this nice dark, dark green. It's going to be in shadow. You want, you want that dark color to help pop. You want to pop, pop, pop. You want to pop, pop, pop that green. And 
down here into this corner. This is darker and it's darker up here. So it's still wet. I can just drop color in where I want to. And there is, there is some yellow down in here. So I'm just gonna hit this. I'll put some brown over here and some more green. The trick is to get the background completely covered. The flower has maintained its shape and I'm going to use that brush to collect the water that is pooled up around the edge of the flower just so that we don't have too much of that. Now I still have plenty of time. This, this I really, really soaked this paper, so I have time to get in there. And we can do a little bit of this orange to go up into the pinks. And let's get a little bit more of that alizarin crimson. We don't want it to, we don't want it to steal the show from from our flowers, but that doesn't mean we can't have it do a little dance. So that's what we're gonna do. And right now I'm dropping in some brown, just kind of out of focus. I'm also gonna hit that, that stem a little bit now, just so I know it's there. All right, I'm gonna come in with my my brush, since we're tilted, it's running down. There we go. Okay. Um, I think we can still go darker. I, I, I feel like we should definitely definitely add some more color here. Some more color here. Get that dark. Now we're getting somewhere. I know I said I wasn't going to have to mix up any color while I was doing the background, but well, I wasn't right. And I'm just making sure that I cover all the way to the edge of my pencil lines because I want it to fit into a frame eventually. And this paper is still wet, but it's getting drier, so I have to be careful now at this point. Um, if if it gets too dry, then I'll get blossoms. This is almost a little bit too dry up here. And we're gonna try and fix that with even more water. Okay. And darker color leading into the green that's underneath it's just it needed to be able to be darker so that it will pop off of or rather the the pink will pop off of the page and we'll do that by having this nice soft diffused dark green while we're at it. We really need to darken up down into this corner. So we'll connect this, this shape by going up into the petal. There. And letting it run down. Do the same thing here. And then there's 
another line here that we can add. We're going to pull down that stem one more time. That'll get really soft, so we won't we won't be doing too much with that. And finally, with a little more of this dark, it's always good to be darker into your corners. It really helps to frame the piece. So we're really going to do that to all the top corners needed a little bit more darkening and even still ran out of color again. But it's still wet so I can get away with this. Let it run. Drop a little green in between those pinky colors. And once I darken it around this leaf, this is where we're going to leave it for now. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to just help this find its shape a little bit. Okay. Um, I keep saying I'm done and then I'm not. Well, you guys are used to that, right? All right, so this is it for stage one. I'm gonna let this dry, and in video two, that you will get on Wednesday, we'll paint the flower. So I hope this was fun, I hope it worked well. Do me a favor, shoot me an email, let me know how the sound was and how the picture was, because I will be adjusting that going forward. Okay? Talk to you soon. Happy painting.